Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with the road to Alpha 4.0, potentially the most important patch for the Persistent Universe, its tech and gameplay. We could see a very early Evocati test of Alpha 4.0 at the end of this year, though even Cloud Imperium have said early next year would be the most likely. However, any way you look at it, Alpha 4.0 is now on the horizon. Cloud Imperium have given us an indication of various features that will be in that patch, but please bear in mind that things change, they get moved around, reprioritized, the nature of Star Citizen's development is pretty fluid, but we're going to highlight what major tech and updates Cloud Imperium are working on on that road to 4.0 and what we can expect. So there are two major features that define Star Citizen Alpha 4.0, and that's the new Star System Pyro and server meshing. Both of these are monumental steps towards the game actually becoming an MMO, doubling, over doubling the sort of gameplay area and, well, there's just a huge amount going on here. Pyro is one of at least two star systems that Cloud and Pyram are currently working on for implementation into the Persistent Universe. Nyx is actually another one they're working on, though that will be a bit after. You could also argue the Odin system is another one. That's the one they're sort of um, working on for Squadron 42 that Squadron 42 is primarily set in. I digress. Pyro is the star system that we are getting next. It's much bigger than the Stanton system. It's got six planets and six moons, but even the sort of area of space and the distance between those planets um, is a lot bigger. The system is not under UEE control and three factions fight over it. The Fire Rats, who are mad star cultists that like fire. The Overlords, which are sort of vigilante, anti-criminal organizations, but I suppose criminal themselves because they're vigilantes and they just take the law into their own hands. And Xenothreat, an anti-alien terrorist group that regularly attack the Stanton system. These factions set the tone and theme for the area, and you're going to be able to ally yourself with one or more of them and fight against the others. And fight against all of them if you want, or you know, you can go entirely alone and stay out of it. I say stay out of it, I mean, they're criminals. They're, they're pirates. They're going to be attacking you if you're in their territory, and they might attack you if you're, like, um, looting some valuable ore or whatever. Clown Imperium are building up their reputation system that's going to tie into how these factions will treat you when they see you, what missions you'll get, will they come to aid you, can you dock with their stations. There isn't much in the way of infrastructure in Pyro. There are space stations that have been taken over by those gangs we mentioned, scattered around, and then there's, like, the um, more built-up sort of premier landing zone we believe to be Ruin Station, um, so it's probably going to be like something similar to Grimhex Ruin Station, having a good amount of facilities, but it's going to be a bit more dangerous, it's going to be a bit odd, there are going to be some areas that are going to probably be out of bounds for you if you don't want to get attacked, because some of the factions will um, sort of all live in there in some form of harmony, but with like turf wars going on at the same time. Pyro is going to look a lot different from the Stanton system as well. There's a dangerous flare star there, so just traveling around in the system can be dangerous. You may need to take cover behind something or take damage or have your ship destroyed, but the general look of Pyro is going to have this sort of powerful, erratic star feel um, where the star can just go um, a bit dangerous at any moment uh, and there's going to be cool effects with that but there's going to be like oppressive gas clouds and it's going to be a lot more chaotic than the Stanton system. Something you'll eventually see in the Pyro system as well is wildlife like the Pyro crab which is a massive Lovecraftian beast and um, it has very big crab offspring as well. It's unlikely that we're going to see it in the first release of Pyro. That said, Cloud and Pyram have been working on the planetary nav mesh and animals that will make this creature possible in the future. And in fact, work on that nav mesh and AI now being able to bring in drop ships to area to sort of reinforce areas, bringing ships to areas is absolutely fantastic and super important for the game as well. It will mean that we get much more um, sort of deep meaty missions around Pyro, but obviously in the game in the shorter term as well. Due to the size and limited safe stations around Pyro though, you're likely going to be refueling with the help from like players starfarers and other uh, refueling ships in the future. Uh, at some point, we should be able to refuel Parasite and docked ships from their parent ships to some degree as well by hand. The Cloud Imperium really wanted to sort of get the refueling mechanics in game as soon as possible so that they could um, then actually put out the Pyro system. They said, you're going to need to refuel in the Pyro system, which is why we sort of uh, pushed the Star Fire refueling. Things like hand repair mechanics in 3.18 will also make players a little bit more self-sufficient and um, not as likely to get trapped in deep space if you can sort of repair some of your ship. We also saw Cloud Imperium uh, fix a bug recently so that 
player reputations for responding to service beacons would persist. So potentially expect in the not too distant future the ability to filter out what star of what sort of what rating of player um, that you will be able to have to respond to your service beacon requests. How are we going to get to Pyro though? Well, that's going to be with a jump point which will connect the Stanton system to the Pyro system. Clan Imperium have showed a demo of one at uh, 2019 at CitizenCon. We're not sure of the sort of planned gameplay behind them yet. Cloud Imperium have talked about some being potentially dangerous or there being a mini game to traverse them and um, you might take light damage if you uh, do badly or if you do very badly you might get pulled out early but they are essentially part of connecting star systems. I would expect them to be reasonably simple to traverse because it's going to be such an important and basic part of the game. I do wonder though would it be possible to travel to another star system in quantum sort of travel or using conventional engines if fuel and time wasn't a factor. Is it possible? How's the setup there? I know that's sort of a little bit um, off uh, tangent. I'm just sort of interested to know. The Pyro system will have a lot to explore though. Currently in Alpha 3.17.2 you can find relics and artifacts which are sort of tied to the Pyro system and its lore. And in CitizenCon 2021 they showed a demo of a retrieve the Hedation artifact mission on a planet in Pyro at a colonial outpost there. All of which are things we're going to see in 4.0. You can expect to see more of these around the system, inhabited and derelict, and small derelict ones um, of those colonial outposts are actually fully explorable in 3.17.2 currently. You can expect a whole host of new missions spanning across both star systems once Pyro launches so pick up and delivery missions with more distance and bite to them but much more expansive missions multi-part missions more mining opportunities lots more dangers and um, dynamic events all tied to potentially both systems and you having to move between them and that's an exciting thing server meshing. This is heralded by some as Star Citizen's silver bullet to a lot of its problems. It's certainly very important, but I don't think there's any one silver bullet for Star Citizen. All of it coming together is what I see as the sort of end goal uh, of Star Citizen, all of this tech coming together to make um, a fantastic game. Server meshing, however, is a core and vital component of the game. It will allow servers to share data seamlessly between one another and give authority of assets between them. So like, you can have the authority over this asset now. Oh no, no, you can have it now. But you'll effectively be moving between servers with no loading screens, none the wiser. You're not going to know you're actually moving between servers. This then enables potentially hundreds or thousands of players in the same star system. With Alpha 4.0, we are supposed to get static server meshing, the sort of first implementation of this, which has predefined planets and areas of space that have servers, so the sort of planet Microtech, Hurston, ArcCorp, and Crusader might all have their own server in the Stanton system. The next stage of that tech will be coming later. Dynamic server meshing will allow for individual areas, rooms, or ships to become nested servers in other servers based on the local population of an area. So you could potentially have thousands of players in the same area and have a massive sort of spaceship battle with all these ships that are all their own servers. But then obviously as this sort of population diminishes, they can go back to, well, this is no longer a server. It's merged with uh, another one of these servers, bam. Cloud Imperium have been working on server meshing for a long time and there are steps that they have achieved or about to achieve that make this more possible. So Cloud Imperium have been testing server cap increases on Alpha 3.17.2, taking player counts to 100 per server from 50. That's been going very well as tests, at least in my opinion. Clan Imperium did say though that they weren't planning to take the live servers to 100 um, for this yet though. So after the tests, um, unless everything went magically, um, they, they wouldn't be going bam, 100 player servers for 3.17.2 live. But Clan Imperium have been improving their general netcode and the way servers handle player and NPC characters, which um, sort of plans to improve drastically desync movement and jitter issues so that and server cap increases they're very important to getting sort of server meshing um, as efficient and as good as possible there's various updates as well that are coming along with uh, things like sharding and persistent entity streaming a big update coming before server meshing in 3.18 is that persistent entity streaming. This tracks location data of objects and enables them to be picked up and found later, but obviously that can be applied in 
a huge amount of different ways. You can have sort of ships that have been destroyed or crashed, whatever, that are salvage sites. You can have um, caches of weapons or cargo that you've left er everywhere. This combined with the cargo overhaul should make for a lot of interesting gameplay. You can expect times and costs to loading and unloading ships, with that making the general gameplay loop much more immersive and in-depth. And things that persistent entity streaming also allows for is potentially base building, things like that. Now, will we see base building in 4.0? Well, they're working on the Rastar system, which is uh, the way that Cloud Imperium build bases and, and um, sort of outposts and sort of areas of structures in game. And eventually that will be sort of um, evolved into a player base building tool. I think we might see something at CitizenCon. Could we see it in 4.0? Unlikely, but it's possible. The hope is as well that once we have server meshing and some netcode updates, Cloud Imperium will be able to have a constant 30 tick rate server. So this means 30 updates a second on the servers for Star Citizen. Why is that important? Well, a massive portion of bugs, derpy AI, desync, jitter, random death, and server degradation is all due to Star Citizen having an inconsistent and low server tick rate due to sort of like those servers being overburdened and unoptimized. Server meshing is going to need some optimization after it's launched in 4.0. So even when it goes live, bam, 4.0. It's going to be like 4.2 before you see um, it really super optimized. At least that's my expectation. And it is going to be a while after that before we see dynamic server meshing. Star Citizen also needs an optimized engine and graphics. And that's where Vulkan and the Gen 12 renderer improvements come in. We've been getting little tweaks and optimizations from Cloud Imperium as they start implementing their Gen 12 renderer, basically optimizing the game code to be much more efficient and use multiple CPU cores and system resources just yeah significantly more effectively. This will lead to less bottlenecks and a more robust, better scaling game. Vulkan is the graphics API they're also moving to and building on, whereas the Gen 12 sort of render improvements are uh, being implemented now. Vulkan is being worked on, but isn't properly supported in game yet. That said, when the Gen 12 render are sort of improvements are all done, and they're sort of uh, moving over to Gen 12, actually Vulkan should almost be done as well. So basically, once both of these come online, and it could potentially be a lot of this stuff could come for 4.0, you can expect a few things. Various scalable graphics options in the Star Citizen's menu, also much better frame rates, and a better looking game. Because Cloud Imperium are going to want to use a lot of that saved sort of bandwidth and sort of resources to make the game look better. So, some stuff maybe a bit beyond 4.0, but certainly stuff that Clan Imperium are working on that is core and integral to the game. They're working on it now, and we could see more and more of this sort of starting to come into 4.0. Tony Zerovic is working with a studio, Game Horizon, on Quantum, basically the dynamic universe simulation that we've seen demoed a few times, and is in-game now in a very basic state. Eventually, this tech will control NPC encounters, loadouts, missions, and all be tied into the economy. So if you have more unprotected miners in an area, there'll be more pirates, and then more security will come along to deal with the pirates, or minerals will directly impact uh, what's being produced and the price there. So if you've got a new ore vein and you're uh, bringing this ore to stations in this area, or there's a lot of deliveries of ore to stations and uh, sort of landing zones in an area, well, that's gonna mean that lots of sort of goods are produced Prices are cheaper, um, but conversely, um, obviously, if there is a drought of a particular mineral or good, well, that's going to cause supply issues and prices to go up. If there is a war going on in an area, you can expect more salvage opportunities, but also the price of munitions and repair is likely to skyrocket too. The system also tracks NPCs and can go down to the individual physicalized level for an NPC when needed. So although it might track probability volumes and going, well, what are you likely to get attacked by here? Um, are you going to get interdicted? Uh, what's the sort of percentage chance of them having this gear over this gear? It also goes into, well, when we need to physicalize these pirates, these NPCs in an area, we'll give them more names, we'll give them sort of, um, sort of stats and everything. And if that pirate gets some kills or escapes or, um, uh, there's sort of chances that they might sort of escalate to a more important NPC and that information is also tracked and eventually if you don't take that pirate out for example his bounty might increase it will track more and more of his kills and achievements both against players and simulated NPCs and you could have like a pirate boss and um, we know Clan Imperium are making progress with this and it ties a lot into a huge amount of the core gameplay systems for the game I am expecting some updates for um, this at CitizenCon this year, um, but I am expecting to see 
more of it sort of integrated into 4.0 as well. Ships need physical components, physicalized components, physicalized damage. This will then allow sort of damage to affect a ship's functionality more realistically rather than ships having sort of artificial health pause and exploding. So ships are much more likely to be disabled during a fight and um, they're going to start to show signs of attrition damage well before that. You're going to be sort of trying to shoot off particular components where you hit a ship is going to be a lot more important. This damage can also potentially be repaired. On larger ships you'll have engineers running around sort of repairing relays, replacing components and also putting out fires. Damage control on fires and fire extinguishers is something that Cloud Imperium are are very much working on at the moment and we've seen lots of their fire tech uh, and um, they are um, very much actively working on fire extinguishing systems but Cloud Imperium are also going through all of their older ships in game and making sure that they have the correct setup cupboards and space to house their physical components and bring them closer to gold standard and then they're going to start to actually put those physicalized parts in and changing the systems over now it's not likely that they're going to have physicalized components in 4.0. It is, however, likely that they're going to have more of the ships set up for physical components and that they've got some of the tech sort of um, pushing towards that and um, starting to come into the game more. I am, however, expecting once 4.0 goes out the door that this is the next major thing that Cloud Imperium will be focused on for a lot of the 4.0 branch. So 4.1, 4.2, um, it's going to be bam, we want physicalized components um, and we need to sort of get them in game it's it's quite a large project and um, they obviously it's quite a large project just updating all of the older ships uh, to that it's ready for physicalized components but um yeah very important very cool there is a huge amount of gameplay exploration missions new mechanics and more that you can expect to be going in Star Citizen between now and 4.0's launch, and even more when it launches. Star Citizen are planning on starting a um, Road to 4.0 info series starting September. That's going to start to promote and share development of all of the um, parts, features, and sort of previews uh, of those features for 4.0. That's only like six weeks away though, so that's, that's pretty close. There's a load of stuff I've probably missed, but the most important bits and pieces on the way to 4.0 have been discussed there. We know that Clan Imperium are working on things like new star maps and uh, mini-map scanning, um, new gameplay with hacking, new ships, vehicles, gravity, um, sort of you can turn on and off on ships properly, orbiting planets. There is loads and loads as well that we don't know exactly where and when it's going to land that a lot of it could be in 4.0. But it's probably a bad idea for Clown Imperium to put too much um, gameplay, especially new feature-wise, in 4.0 because they're going to be testing this new, new server meshing and a whole new star system. And you can expect that to have a very long patch test cycle, at least three months just with those. So Clown Imperium do need to be a bit careful on what they put in a 4.0 patch. And potentially, yeah, bam, put a load in it in the next patch. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, what do you think? Are you excited for Alpha 4.0? Do you think it represents a lot of Star Citizen's tech coming together? Do you foresee terrible issues with server meshing? Or do you think CIG have got this? What interesting features do you think we'll see in 4.0? Or do you think Clan and PM are going to keep it pretty light when you're talking about sort of new features um, beyond uh, those sort of core ones? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Greetings, citizen. I am NordVPN Man, bringing the justice of cybersecurity to the world. I protect you from ads, trackers, and malware. I punched a guy so hard once with security features that I knocked him back in time. He was able to use the knowledge of the future to become incredibly rich and wealthy. He bought like 10 subscriptions to NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer after that. Really smart guy. Another time, I prevented a hacker from snooping at your IP address by taking off his hands. You can't hack with no hands. Probably. Anyway, you should get NordVPN, otherwise the terrorists win. Every month we have a giveaway for July 2022. We're giving away a Hull A cargo hauler as well as a Nomad multi-role freighter. That Nomad also comes with a hovercrud bike. So there's two lucky winners this month and both of those packages contain access to Star Citizen. Comment on any of my videos during this month to be in for a chance of winning that and check the description down below for more details. Please consider becoming a Patreon or channel member with the join button under my videos. This nets you a variety of exclusive extras, badges, influence on the channel and content and special videos, as well as helping us produce daily content. Thank you very much for watching. Please take care and I'll see you in the verse.